This channel is all about wonderful world of wine, wine education. Really, we're just making sure that you get more enjoyment out of the wonderful product that is wine. My presentations very much follow key text and key syllabus of wine education. So if you are studying the world of wine, you will find these useful. This presentation follows the WSET level three very closely. So uh, the Fortified Muscat series, only one series, is split into three parts. Part one, we'll go through youthful unaged muscats and a bit of an introduction as well. And then we'll go part two, fully developed aged muscats, and then an example short written question, which I'll walk through. Parts two and three are only available to subscribers of my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. If you have any questions and any comments about this presentation, and perhaps you would like to share your thoughts and ideas about muscats, maybe that you have enjoyed from around the world, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below. So fortified wines, uh, a wine which has the addition of spirit to it, they are made throughout the world. The classic examples include port and sherry, and they have been emulated, copied around the world. Now, it's not possible to cover all of these in this presentation as it's aimed at the level three standard. Uh, so we're going to go through four to five muscats from two major areas in this series. So really from the south of the Rhone, where we find muscat Baume de Venise, and then also Rutherglen muscat we find from Victoria, Australia. Uh, so they're the two that we'll be focused on. So, of course, the clue is in the title fortified muscat. Uh, so the great variety in play is muscat and all of its various guises as well. There's lots of different types of muscat around the world that no doubt you have come across before. Uh, so the group of muscats tend to have acidities that are low to medium, like you'll see on the screen just there, and they are intensely aromatic wine styles being dry or sweet and even still or sparkling. Now you'll find perfumed aromas of orange blossom. You'll find rose, grape, uh, fruitiness. Really it's really focused on the floral and fruit aspect of the style of wine. So they're very aromatic expressions. So where do we find these types of wine from? So muscat, and certainly muscat utilised for fortified muscat, can thrive in warm and hot climates, but the best vineyards will have some moderating balance in their climate. So you'll have a cooling influence from an ocean or mountain, which helps to preserve the grape's acidity levels and aromas, so we protect the aromas, we get some better acidities, which then can uh, somewhat balance out the high sugars, which can be found in these wine styles. Now, we have two groups, major groups of styles for this level of qualification. So we have on the left hand side, those that are more youthful, unaged, like Muscat Baume de Venise, given the example there. And then on the right hand side there, the more fully developed and aged styles, such as the Rutherglen Muscat. And you'll see a clear aesthetic difference there. On the left hand side, the youthful and aged is this kind of medium gold appearance where the fully developed age style is kind of a, a brown amber kind of colour. And that gives you the difference between the youthful versus the more oxidative expression. So let's tur tur uh, turn our heads to the youthful expression, which was on the left hand side, that previous slide. So youthful unaged muscats. Now these are typically medium gold in colour, as you will see from the bottle of Perran Muscat Baume de Venise and the glass sitting there on your slide. They are floral and aromatic, 
And the aim of both the grape growing and winemaking is to really make sure that the primary characters are protected. They are as pure as possible. So the varietal primary characteristics. These are typically sweet due to the winemaking techniques, uh, but rarely luscious. So these are typically sweet, uh, youthful, unaged muscat. So the location of where we find this. Now, we find muscat being produced actually quite frequently around the world. And in fact, this youthful, unaged expression is quite common across the south of France in the Languedoc, Roussillon sort of area. But for this text, very specifically around the village of Baume de Venise in the southern Rhone. So this is towards the Don Del, very close to Avignon, uh, close to the river Rhone. So this is our notable example. That's a picture of vineyards in Baume de Venise. And there is a map there of the north and the south of Rhone. And that red dot there states Baume de Venise. You see quite near to Orange, Carpentras and Avignon. Grape growing. So the grapes will be harvested when they are ripe and healthy. Uh, the other option, which we'll talk about in video two, is to put the grapes through some sort of drying process. So raisining or drying the grapes after picking uh, in order to concentrate the grapes. Now, that's more common for the other style. It is not common for this expression. And that's because this technique will add extra dried fruit characteristic, characteristics, which actually will kind of counter the point of the wine. And the point of the wine is to have very pure, aromatic and varietal character. Um, winemaking. Now, once the grapes are crushed, um, quite a few Muscat Baume de Venise will separate the juice from the skins. But some skin contact can be found, and certainly at the lower end, so um, only a few hours, in order to help increase aromatic intensity, but also some weight and texture on the palate. Now, this can be further enhanced if the skin contact then carries into the fermentation. So this would mean that you have some skin contact before fermentation and then possibly some skin contact during fermentation. And with the raise of temperature that you will find in that specific vessel, of course, there will be more extraction of uh, aroma, flavor, color, uh, and so on. I have included the Domaine de Bernardin in the picture there. There's a bottle and a label. And in the background, in sort of a hazy, uh, um, out of focus, you'll see a much darker colored wine. That's because these guys are quite well known for producing quite uh, intensive skin contact expressions. And I've got to say, it's possibly the greatest, in my opinion, of the Muscat Baume de Venise. They are delicious wines, um, always fond of a little bit of skin contact. Uh, the winemaking process then is our final slide. So you'll see here the first vat, fermentation is cool and this begins, okay? So we start a fermentation typically at about 2% ABV. It is stopped by adding grape spirit at 96% and this will be your fortification. Now, of course, that will stop the fermentation early, meaning that you have a lot of residual sugar, typically over 100 grams per liter. Uh, and then it will be stored in inert vessels and conditions, so typically using gas, in order to protect that wine and keep it away from oxygen. So that's your vat number three. Eventually, after that, it will be bottled. So this is what produces the non-oxidized, youthful, unaged expression of Muscat, typically Muscat Baume de Venise. OK, well, that brings me to a conclusion for that first video. Part two, we'll be talking about fully developed aged Muscat, typically from Rutherglen 
in Australia. Once again, if you have any comments or questions, please do get in touch. You can do so by commenting on this video below. Part two and part three, remember, only available to those of you who subscribe to the huge amount of content available on my e-learning portal. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.